Travel consideration provided by... Consumer Cellular, this is Sam. How may I help you? This is a butt dial. Well, somebody's butt. Just thought I'd let you know that with Consumer Cellular, you can get the same exact coverage as the leading carriers, but for up to half the price. We made a promise to our boy Blue that we would make the healthiest foods possible with the finest natural ingredients and real meat first. And that's our promise to you and your dog or cat. Because when you love them like family, you want to feed them like family. I had your dolls. Tomorrow on ET, a Taylor Swift and NSYNC collab. Only we're with Joey Fatone. I cannot wait for that. Now, before we go, Lifetime has done it again, y'all. Seven months after being convicted of killing his wife and son, Alec Murdoch is getting the TV movie treatment. Bill Pullman transforms into the disgraced South Carolina attorney for Murdoch Murders the Movie. It airs on Life. Happening now. The rain is done. We'll take a look at how much fell and where, along with when the lower humidity arrives and the fall like air. I'll see you in a bit. He pleaded guilty to trying to solicit a minor online and then decided to run for city council in this small South Bear County town. What happened after he started asking questions? And the rain closed down several schools due to power outages. Are you ready for one? How some simple things in your home can keep your household running for days without electricity. The News at 5 starts right now. The heat, the humidity, and the wait, it's all over. Finally, soaking rain moving into the area, and most of us saw it in those terms. Adam, it was a beautiful morning, and it looks like we're headed for a beautiful weekend, too. Uh, finally got to use my windshield wipers this yeah. morning. It was fantastic. Loved it. The rain now far south of San Antonio, moving out of the KSAT 12 viewing area. LaSalle McMullen County is still hanging on to a few showers. Let's talk about how much rain fell and where were the bullseyes of the rainfall accumulations. We'll just look at the last, well, I'm gonna make it actually 24 hours. We'll look at the 24 hour rainfall accumulations. The yellow indicates radar estimates of at least two inches of rain. I mean, we're talking the drought stricken Bandera County, Kerr County, even just about into Bernie. Take a look at this here. We'll actually plot that around Bernie estimates of 1.6 Stone Oak area estimates of 1.1 near the airport. We've got estimates of around an inch. The airport actually did measure 1.41 inches closer to Seguin. Check this out that yellow there right along and south of I 10 two to three inches of rain estimated by the Doppler radar. Now, not everybody saw that much, but hey, at least we all got some drops and some of us really cashed in. Leon Springs, 0.91. Jim's Backyard and Shirts, 1.16. Panamaria, about an inch. Unfortunately, closer to the Rio Grande, nothing there. But Mica, 1.57. Lavernia, six miles south of Lavernia, three inches even. Still humid this evening. We have the humidity still in place despite a light north wind. That all changes tomorrow. We're going to talk about when the drier air arrives, how much cooler it's going to be for the weekend in just a bit. It's beautiful. Thank you, Adam. A would be politician with a checkered past trying to run for city council in Sandy Oaks in South Bear County until we learned he pleaded guilty to trying to groom a teenage girl online. Tonight, Garrett Berger takes a look at the man's record and shows us what happened when we started asking questions. Normally, it's city council candidates knocking on doors, but this time we had questions for the candidate. Stephen Groover filed his application for a place on the city of Sandy Oaks ballot on the last possible day this summer, and just a little less than three years after he was arrested for online solicitation of a minor. Groover was accused of exchanging messages and graphic sexual texts with what he thought was a 15-year-old girl but was in fact an undercover investigator with the Tarrant County Sheriff's Office participating in a sting. According to messages included in his arrest affidavit, Groover said he would teach her how to have sex, asked for partially undressed photos, and gave explicit instructions on how to perform a sexual act on herself. He was arrested in September 2020 here in Bear County on a warrant for online solicitation of a minor, and last year pleaded guilty to the lesser felony charge of attempted online solicitation of a minor. But he was not convicted as he got deferred adjudication, meaning his guilty plea is set aside until he finishes a two-year probation next July. If he completes it successfully, his case will be dismissed without a conviction appearing on his record. Since Tuesday, we've made multiple attempts to reach Groover by phone, text, and email. And finally this morning, yeah. at his home. Hi, my name's Garrett. I'm looking for Mr. Steven Groover. I'm a reporter from KSAT. 
I don't know who you are. Leave. We are running a story, ma'am. It's Mr. Groover's opportunity to speak with us. My card's on your front door. As of airtime, we have not heard back. The day after we first tried to contact Groover, the city secretary of Sandy Oaks confirmed he had withdrawn his application for a place on the ballot, meaning that there will not be an election in Sandy Oaks this year, as all of the other candidates are now running unopposed. I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Also do at five, a gun on campus putting Steele High School on a hold this afternoon. The school's principal says that the student was showing a picture of a gun and that got reported to a teacher. Campus resource officers were able to find the student that was reportedly showing the picture and then discovered the student actually did have a real unloaded gun along with ammunition in, it, in their possession. That student was detained by Cibolo police. The principal says the student will not return to campus. Steele High School was on hold for about 25 minutes, and during that time, the hallways were kept clear and the students remained in their classrooms. School administrators sent a letter home to parents informing them of what had happened. A protester for hire holding a loud demonstration at the home of a local state rep. It happened at Democratic State Representative Philip Cortez's house. He called police when the driveway of his home was blocked by the woman's truck. That blasted political messages on pro-school choice vouchers. Officers say the woman said she had to park in front of his home or she wouldn't get paid. The woman, who was from Florida, told police she had a list of other state reps and their addresses that she's planning to visit. On this issue of vouchers, I've consistently voted against them. This is not the way to send the message. And this is actually hurting their cause. Now this Monday, Governor Greg Abbott will have a special session at the state capitol on school vouchers as well as school choice. Caught on camera the moment migrants made a run to the border. This happened in El Paso just yesterday, but over the last couple of weeks, migrants have been seen riding on top of freight trains from Central America to Northern Mexico. They're hoping to make their way to our border where attempts to properly at process these crowds of migrants have failed. Scenes like that, part of the reasoning that Homeland Security and the Biden administration are now waiving environmental rules to restart the building of the border wall. The Biden administration reversing its stance on nearly 20 miles of new border wall in South Texas that was under construction when he took office in 2020. The Department of Homeland Security waiving the federal laws to make way for the construction using funds from a congressional appropriation back in 2019. ABC's Melissa Adan with the move that stunned some Democrats and environmental advocates. The Biden administration is waiving more than two dozen federal laws to allow the construction of a border wall in South Texas, as more cities along the border and in the north struggle to handle the influx of migrants coming from Latin America. The new border wall construction approved in South Texas to cover roughly 20 miles where the wall was left incomplete, the decision marking President Biden's first use of a sweeping executive power. The Department of Homeland Security says this is not a policy decision. It was appropriated during the prior administration in 2019, and the government is legally required to utilize these funds for their appropriated purpose. Adding the construction will include the installation of detection technology, lighting, and access roads. In 2020, President Biden strongly criticized then President Trump's border policy and promised, if elected, not to build another foot of the wall. Money was appropriated for the border wall. I tried to get them to reappropriate, to redirect that money. They didn't. They wouldn't. Do you believe the border wall works? No. September marked the highest number of migrant encounters at the U.S.-Mexico border so far this year, with Border Patrol apprehending more than 200,000. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken discussing their concerns during meetings with Mexican and U.S. officials in Mexico City. We'll discuss how we continue to enhance border and port security while facilitating legitimate travel and trade between us. But we want to make sure that our border is also safe and secure. Environmental advocates say these border structures will run through public lands, habitats of endangered plants and animal species. Melissa Adon, ABC News, Los Angeles.
Back here at home, a day off from school, not for snow or ice, but rain. Power outages in the Alamo Heights area canceling some classes today. According to a district official, there were multiple power outages in the neighborhood. Those outages affecting phone and internet access at all the campuses, but classes were also interrupted at the junior school at, at Cambridge and Woodridge elementaries. It's never a good time for the power to go out and rarely are we fully prepared for when that happens. But it doesn't have to be the case. 12 Under Sides Marilyn Moritz with how to prepare and even keep your household running for an outage that lasts for days. Power outages are inconvenient, but when Aileen Carpio became a mom, losing power was a big deal. I had just given birth and I was breastfeeding. I had my whole freezer full of breast milk and so I panicked. But she was able to save her milk bank by not opening her freezer. Good advice for a shorter outage. But what if you lose electricity for days or even weeks? This is critical, your cell phone. A cell phone is a lifeline because it's what you're gonna use to contact friends, family, or emergency responders in the event of an emergency. So it's imperative that you keep it fully charged. Switch your phone to a power saving setting such as airplane or low power mode and use the phone only when necessary. It's a good idea to have important phone numbers and addresses written down. Now your refrigerator. Food safety experts say you're unpacked Powered fridge can keep food at a safe temperature below 40 degrees for about four hours. That's if you don't open the door. And a full freezer's worth of food will stay frozen for about 48 hours if the door remains closed. If you do lose food, check with your insurance company. Many homeowners policies will pay to replace the spoiled food. Finally, generators. They can come to your rescue. With all the power outages that we've been through now that the winter's coming, we would definitely consider a generator. Just remember, using it improperly can be deadly. Never run it in the house or garage. Keep it at least 20 feet from the house and direct the exhaust away from windows and doors. Marilyn Moritz. KSAT 12 News. And a bit of a correction. Uh, classes were uninterrupted at the junior school and at Cambridge and Woodridge, but the high school did have to shut down there in Alamo Heights. Taking a look outside, this is uh, Highway 90 and General McMullen, and you can see traffic moving along just fine. The roads are already drying out. Coming up, the recent rains offering a break from the constant extreme heat, but how does all this sudden water affect your home's foundation the good and the bad when we come back i'm myra arthur here in the ksat newsroom and here's what we're working on for the news at six o'clock today rain rain Finally, it came our way. Some business owners on Canyon Lake especially excited about that. What this wet weather means for them as they've dealt with the lake at record low levels over the summer. And a retired teacher trying to keep eyes protected and give back at the same time ahead of the upcoming eclipse. We'll tell you how the glasses that his company is selling gives you the option on how to donate. That and more today on the News at Six. Thank you, Myra. As she said, finally San Antonio gets a full dose of rain, but all that water all of a sudden might not be a good thing for your home. After an extremely hot summer, rain can cause the foundation of your home to shift under the muddy soil. Camelia Juarez with what you should look out for and do before it gets worse. Foundation specialists say that they're usually busy this time of year and after some heavy rain, but they're saying this year is different. They're having a lot more calls because we had such a hot, dry summer. Think about um, the soil underneath a home like a sponge. And so all summer long, there hasn't been any moisture. Jade Owens with Baird Foundation Repairs says the soil underneath your home might shrink and shrivel up because of the lack of rain. So you might notice doors or windows won't close right or cracks on the side of the house. Then when we get these really heavy rains, um, it'll start to swell, right? So it swells really quickly. The swelling might allow your door to close properly, but it's a sign that the foundation of your home is shifting. As soon as things dry up again, 
your house will start to move again. And so um, there's just that constant shifting because the soils in South Texas just aren't very strong. Clay soils tend to shift more, so it's important to have proper drainage around the house. If you don't have proper drainage around your home and gutters, um, it will actually wash out the soil around your home. So not only um, is the soil weak, but then it starts to get washed out as well. And so that's where you'll see voids underneath your home. Homeowners can add rain gutters or make sure to have soil grating against the house. You'll continue to have movement and that movement's going to get more and more drastic. So it's definitely better to, you know, fix the problem as soon as possible. Camelia Juarez, Case at 12 News. <laughs> so, you know, you have the good, you have the bad, but it's mostly the good. <laughs> we didn't have severe weather. No, we had no flooding. No, it just sounded good outside, looked good outside. It was fantastic to have a morning like what we had. Often a rainy morning can make it difficult to get up and get going. It was the opposite for me this morning. It was all right, let's go. Let's check this out. Humidity, though, we're waiting for that to drop and we're still waiting for the bigger temperature drop with this front. The humidity drops tomorrow afternoon. We get a taste of fall this weekend and the coolest temperature since April 30th. Here's when that is Sunday morning. That's what I'm looking ahead to. 56 degrees is what we're expecting in the morning. So morning temperature around sunrise at 56. That'll be the coolest since April 30th. It's not going to last all that long. You see our morning temperatures rise back up again, but it's that time of year you start to see those oscillations and well, this is just the first taste of it. The newest drought monitor is in. It does not take into account any of the rainfall this morning, but let's put the radar and the rain on top of the drought monitor. And isn't that a beautiful sight? right over the extreme and exceptional drought. I'll get out of the way so you can really see this full screen, but those really dark red areas, that's where we need the rain the most. And we got some good rain on the order of one to three inches in some of the really drought stricken parts of our area. Obviously we need more, but we'll take what we can whenever the opportunity presents itself. And today was a good opportunity and it paid off. Now the clouds are slowly going to start clearing from north to south this evening and tonight. That's just the low clouds. High clouds are going to stick around. We have all this moisture aloft and even over the Pacific that's going to be streaming overhead, especially as we get into this weekend. And that's going to give us a lot of high and mid-level clouds. So I don't expect full sunshine uh, for quite a while just because of that Pacific moisture. Other than that, we're watching for that cooler, that drier and cooler air. Drier air now in North Texas. Amarillo, dew point of 34, even Oklahoma City, dew point of 49. Meanwhile, we're all in the 60s for our dew points to even near 70. So yes, a cold front moved through, but we're waiting on that drier, less humid, more crisp air to move in. By this time tomorrow, that's going to be the case. We'll see that transition and you'll notice that transition. Tomorrow we'll start the day very humid again. Dew points upper 60s near 70. But then by late afternoon tomorrow, about this time tomorrow, that's when the humidity really falls off. The dew points fall and it's going to make for a wonderful Friday evening and of course weekend as well. Let's talk high temperatures. 82 are high today. That was at 430 a.m. And we broke our streak of consecutive 90 degree days. We had 119 days in a row with a high temperature at or above 90 degrees. That, of course, includes our 100 degree days. But that streak came to an end so we can stamp that streak done and over with. And we can move on with our fall now, I think, hopefully. 75 in Pleasanton, currently Catula 74. We're up to 85 in Del Rio. You can see where the clouds have thinned out a bit, even Ozona 81 and Junction 80 degrees. Bigger picture does show the cooler air farther to the north. You have to get up into the plains. We're talking Dakotas and Nebraska. That's that cooler air we're anticipating for the weekend. It still has some real estate to travel over before it gets here. So tomorrow morning, 67 and humid, 78 at noon, 86 the high temperature, near average for this time of year, but the taste of fall comes into the weekend. We'll be 80s tomorrow all across the board. It's this weekend, look at that, mid 70s for highs, Saturday and Sunday, low humidity, some nice clouds streaming overhead. What a weekend. Oh, the sports lovers are going to have a blast at football tonight, tomorrow night. Yeah, a little cooler out there. Why not? And a little pep in your step because 
Spurs are about to start playing. Yes, the Spurs fans getting extremely excited because they open preseason play on Monday, and we're a little less than three weeks away from the regular season opener. Coming up, Malachi Branham talks about the effect of Wimby will have on the team. And in baseball, the Rangers Josh Young is still trying to find his groove. Coming up. It's been good. It's been good. Very competitive. Um, we're getting after it. Yeah, you heard it. Malachi Branham says camp is good in big board sports. Training camp is rolling along full steam ahead for the Spurs as they prep for the 82 game regular season. The addition of Victor Wimanyama will help the Spurs out in a lot of ways, including the fact that his talented teammates will get some much deserved publicity on the court. The seven footer will hopefully make life a bit easier for guys like Malachi Branham. Yeah, spacing, um, you know, it's going to be a lot of eyes on him. Oh, man, that's going to be wide open shots for us. Yesterday, we got to talk with Wimby about what position he's going to play this season, and that's still being determined. At Media Day, Pop said it's cool to figure out if Wimby is a center, power forward, or small forward. His unique skill set for his height certainly opens up a lot of possibilities. It just goes without saying that uh, I'm, I'm playing the same, sometimes the same role as Trey Jones sometimes uh, the same as Zach Collins, sometimes as Devin Vassell. You know, it's, there's really no limitations. So, and on a lot of set plays, on a lot of, of plays, it really depends on where you are. It's, but I can, be the, I can be the point guard just like I can, I can be the, the wing, it doesn't matter. And that's what makes them such a tough matchup on the court. The Spurs are open the preseason Monday night at 7 at the OKC Thunder. The Texas Rangers swept the Tampa Bay Rays two games to none in the wild card round to advance to the ALDS, where they'll face the Baltimore Orioles. Josh Young came through in a big way yesterday in game two, going three for four with an RBI triple and two runs scored. He went 0 for four in the Rangers' game one victory. Young, who missed six weeks with a fractured left thumb, returned to the lineup on September the 18th, and he still tried to find his groove at the plate. I wouldn't say I'm all the way back, but it is a huge confidence boost. Um, no matter you know how it's feeling, I'm gonna give you my best every single night. And uh, I mean, yeah, when you miss six weeks and try to jump back in, you're gonna go through your ups and downs. Um, but it's a huge confidence boost for me today. Rangers are open the best of five ALDS at Baltimore Saturday at noon. Game two is Sunday at 3 p.m. Game three and perhaps game four will go down in Arlington. Game five, if necessary, is Friday the 13th, Ursula uh -oh. at Baltimore. Scary. Yeah, let's hope it doesn't go to that. All right, let's scare the other guys. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> we want to tell you about a trouble spot out there right now. This is Loop 410 at Blinko Road. You can see there's a vehicle off on the side that's having some issues. There's an emergency vehicle there. And traffic is just crawling along. Nothing like the traffic problems we had this morning during the rainstorms. Uh, but this is going to slow you down on your way home. Yeah, the rain in this morning commute is something we haven't seen in a while, so we had to readjust to it. This is out in Mico. Look at that beautiful Medina County. Uh, earlier today, or at the Ranch David, there you go. Anyway, one and a half inches there, uh, not far from Mico. It's good to see these San Antonio 1.2. Actually, this is in Canyon Lake area. And then Leon Springs, over two inches. That's nice to see. Love seeing those rain gauges. Thank you for watching the News at 5.